Hey, Just Jones. new recipes like new savory lemon herb chicken piccata, tender chicken over delicately seasoned rice, and new angel hair pasta in a thick tomato basil sauce. So rich, so satisfying, so full of flavor, you don't give up anything to feel like this. Lady in red. Make red your color with smart ones. Watching Philadelphia's NBC 10. Serving Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and Delaware. Now, live, this is News 10 at 11. The ice storm cometh. It was difficult to get around downtown Pottstown any way you tried it, and Earthwatch says it's far from over. Good evening, I'm Larry Menti. And I'm Renee Chenault. Our top story on News 10 at 11, the dangerous ice storm continues all over our area at this hour. News 10 in Chester County as plows scraped and sanded Route 100 in West Vincent, keeping it from becoming an ice rink. Route 422 in North Coventry is also extremely icy tonight. Drivers are urged to reduce speeds no matter where they are driving. News 10 also on Broad and Cuyahoga in North Philadelphia, where if you wanted to drive, you had to scrape ice first. Lots of work to be done on the sidewalks as well. And an ice storm, of course, means dangerous driving. And tonight, salt trucks were out all over the Delaware Valley trying to make the roads a little bit safer. News 10 was trailing this one on Jackson Street in South Philadelphia. The Cherry Hill Mall is one of the many malls in our area that closed early tonight. They rolled the doors shut at 6 p.m so workers could get home before the roads got worse. And as the icy precipitation continues, News 10 meteorologist John Belaris is live outside. John, when is it going to end? Tell you, Larry, we thought it would be ending by now in the city. We thought the ice would be changing to rain, but that has obviously been delayed. Let's check out the radar, and you can see the green indicating the sleet and freezing rain continuing to pelt the region. Now, western Montgomery, Delaware and Bucks County, a little bit later on, you may be in for some heavy freezing rain, and that's a dangerous icing situation. Right now, the icy mix still across the city and the rain across southern Jersey. However, that icy mix will be changing to plain rain as the ice block begins to melt away. The milder temperatures will move into the city between 2 and 4 a.m. However, the northern and western suburbs still under the icy gun tomorrow morning, plus another headache. Flooding rains moving in. I'll have the details on that, plus some good news in your weekend forecast coming up in just a few minutes. Larry and Renee? All right, see you in a bit, John. Well, as John predicted last night, the worst conditions were north and west of the city. That's where News 10's Tracy Davidson is now, live in Limerick, Montgomery County. Tracy. Well, Renee, you know the weather conditions are bad when there are only a few people at the Limerick Diner. The good news is the precipitation here has stopped, at least for now. John says more is on the way. The bad news is these roads are still a mess. Snow and slush, and beneath it all, that slick ice. For those who ventured, it was white-knuckle driving, like driving on skates with less control. Montgomery County officials report slushy roads, no major accidents, probably because there are few people on the roads. Center City commuter Keith Wood is relieved he's home safe and sound. The roads are terrible. Uh, from School Expressway to uh, 422, nothing but ice, and it uh, took a while. Don Rhodes has faced the bitter cold temperatures and treacherous roads for hours, plowing around Pottstown and Limerick. But his business is off because he says people don't realize how bad it is. Everybody's trying to wait the storm out, hoping it's going to rain and melt, and they're going to find out tomorrow morning. That's all I can really say. It's going to be icy. Some aren't waiting. Bill Graff will do parking lots tonight. Just got called out just now. Everybody's got to deal with it in some form. What did you do all day? Um, well, bake cookies and sometimes shovel and then bake cookies. So it's been kind of like a fun time just staying at home today. A positive attitude, but I think a lot of people will welcome the warm. You see salt trucks out everywhere. Live in Limerick Township, Tracy Davidson, News 10. The ice storm put a lot of passengers at the airport in a holding pattern tonight. News 10 at Philadelphia International, where the lines stretch through the terminals this evening. Icy runways and icy planes caused delays and cancellations. Some stranded passengers were sent to local hotels for the night.
Most of us could escape the bitter cold temperatures just by going home, unless, of course, you have no heat. You'd be mad. They were. It was the situation for hundreds of cold and angry Germantown residents. News 10's Luann Kahn has their story. It's a lot quieter here at Fisher's Crossing since tenants got their heat and electricity back. Still, a lot of finger pointing about who's to blame for 20 hours without heat. 200 residents in subsidized housing paid the price. This is not fair! It's not fair! You see what the temperature is out here? It's too cold! You got disabled people in there! People that can't do for themselves! 200 angry tenants, cold and hungry tenants in subsidized housing. Children played in the hall because it was warmer than inside the apartments. You can see the clock shows when the electricity stopped at 9 o'clock. 9 o'clock last night. On Cedar Avenue, they gave them people a place. They gave them hot food. They gave them, gym. they gave them space heaters. They're not giving us nothing. She points out a stark comparison to the treatment of people on the main line who are offered hot food and hot showers within hours of losing their heat earlier this week. Early this morning, one apartment here caught on fire. A tenant suffered burns after falling asleep next to candles she was using for heat and light. The Red Cross came out but was told by management their services were not needed. One of the owners told me tonight that that was an error in judgment. This is America. People that come off the boat. They're treated better than me. Managers say this was all Pico Energy's fault, that it was their transformer that blew. Pico Energy says it's the manager's fault because they didn't have extra fuses and an electrician. In the meantime, a deputy health commissioner came over and checked everybody out, and the Red Cross came back with a hot meal. In Germantown, Luann Kahn, News 10. Now to Washington and the historic opening arguments in President Clinton's impeachment trial. For six hours this afternoon and well into the evening, managers from the House of Representatives laid out their case. The Senate will now hear you. It all started when Chief Justice William Rehnquist, serving as judge, tapped his gavel and announced the Senate would convene as a, court of, convene as a court of impeachment. House Judiciary Committee Chairman Henry Hyde then spoke for the prosecutors, saying, quote, We are here as advocates for the rule of law, for equal justice under the law, and for the sanctity of the oath. And Wisconsin and Senator not, James Sensenbrenner laid out the allegations. The stonewalling and legal hair splitting and obstructing the courts from finding the truth. Then several House Republicans started laying out their evidence. They showed President Clinton's videotaped testimony before Ken Starr's grand jury. They used the word conspiracy. They described his efforts to obstruct justice, and they put it by frantically calling people like Secretary Betty Curry to influence them and ensuring them what they'd been hearing wasn't true. Why? Because he knew the truth, but he did not want Miss Curry to tell the truth. Bottom line, President Clinton is accused of perjury and obstruction of justice for trying to conceal his affair with Monica Lewinsky, an intern at the White House. He and his lawyers maintain, even if the charges are proven, they are not impeachable offenses. The trial continues tomorrow. President Clinton isn't letting the trial tie him down, though. He's coming to our area for a visit next week. News 10 has learned Mr. Clinton will visit an undisclosed school in Montgomery County Wednesday. He's bringing the First Lady, along with Vice President and Mrs. Gore. It's a follow-up to his State of the Union address on Tuesday. Day one of deliberations in the Tom Capano murder trial, and the weather had an effect on the proceedings. A live report straight ahead. Also ahead, a change in police policy that may save lives. It comes right after a Northeast cop shot his wife and himself. On the News 10 Health Watch, a new Viagra for the man who can't wait not even an hour for results. And saving wildlife in the big city, it's happening right here in Philadelphia. A special report tonight as News 10 continues. You're watching News 10 at 11. In the last 200 years, there have only been 20 cases of restored sight. Virgil Adamson is about to become one of them. Well, this is the true story. It's, it's, a, it's a shadow. You can walk right through it, see? Of one extraordinary man. That has to be hard. Look at that. Who's looking at the world for the very first time. People eat this? Val Kilmer, Mira Sorvino. You at first sight, rated PG-13. Starts Friday at theaters everywhere. If you're looking for a computer, 
There's no reason to go anywhere else but Circuit City. We've got it all, from software and hardware to printers, high-speed modems, memory, or you can design your own system. Time. Sure is. And what's more, Sears has a great deal on a Kenmore washer and dryer. You can save $120 on the pair. So we could save a bundle. Oh, yeah, if you hurry. Your chance to get 0% financing for a full year ends Saturday. Right now, it's your local forecast on the Weather Channel. of the Northeast brace for another cold night with ice and snow and it is particularly bad out here on 87 and 287 just north of New York City in Westchester County, New York. That's a live scene just north of New York City. I'm Dave Schwartz live here in the Forecast Center with this special weather center and tonight we are going to look at the prospects for more ice and snow, talk about tomorrow morning's rush hour, when it's going to end, and senior meteorologist Colin Marquis is working on that, and we'll get with you here in just a minute, Colin. And we're also going to go to the field to find out what conditions are like in a couple of major metropolitan areas. This is what it looked like at Logan Airport today, where the snow is coming down and it just slowed things up. The plows were out, they were de-icing planes, flights were delayed, they probably will be here in the morning. It's just nasty all across the Northeast Corridor from Washington, D.C., through New York, and all the way to Boston. Actually, 17 inches of snow have piled up on the south side of Boston here tonight. 14 degrees in Beantown, 22 degrees here in New York City, and that freezing line all the way down to Memphis where snow flurries are being reported. So here is your Arctic air, and here is the moisture that's coming up from the south, and there's plenty more yet to come. That's overrunning this Arctic air, so we're looking for more snow and more ice in the jagged shaded area. We've already got a problem here tonight, as you can see. Well, right in the thick of things is the Weather Channel's Jeff Morrow. He's standing by in King of Prussia, just north of Philadelphia. And Mike Seidel is getting iced up here in Westchester County, New York. Mike, what's it look like there right now? Well, Dave, the sleet we've been dealing with for the past couple of hours has uh, slackened off for now. We do expect, obviously, overnight more sleet and then eventually freezing rain, which is going to cause a lot of problems, especially north and west of the city. And that's where we are in Westchester County out here at the Tappan Zee Bridge in uh, uh, Westchester. The other side is Rockland County. Traffic is very light, as you would expect on a night like tonight, being the uh, late hour and the fact that the roads are in pretty poor shape. Now, they've been uh, coming by and scraping and salting, but that sleet has now put down another layer of uh, kind of an icy slush. Temperatures right now up to 18 degrees, so we're seeing a slow rise in the temperature, but uh, it's going to be at least mid, if not late morning, before we see uh, that thermometer above freezing out here in suburbia. Meanwhile, in the city and out on the island, temperatures should be above freezing by about daybreak or so, and that will ease your driving problems, but the combination of warmer air and rainfall 
and the fact that the ground is frozen and we've got some snow out there maybe blocking some of the drainage vents we could have a problem with some urban and small stream flooding with all the runoff and melting going on as temperatures climb to 40 or so uh, especially across Long Island and in New York City itself so a lot of problems ahead uh, first things first though we have to deal with the icy roadways and as you can see we've got some problems tonight here on the uh, Tappan Zee a couple of vehicles are pulled over we've seen this going on all day a lot of cars pulling over getting their uh, windshield scraped and getting all the ice and slush off the uh, front hood so it doesn't blow back at them and reduce their visibility so this is a kind of scene we've seen repeated consistently across uh, the uh, tri-state area for the past uh, day or so Dave and until it warms up by late morning tomorrow it's going to continue to be a problem so remember for the rush hour in the morning extra time and extra distance drive safely especially if you're coming in from northern and western suburbs into New York City and we will be back in the morning at 6 a.m. Eastern to keep you updated and let you know what happened overnight as far as the freezing rain and the icing goes back to you thanks for your great work today Mike appreciate that thank you Mike Sudell from Westchester County just north of New York City well you head south and you're still in the Arctic air that's where Jeff Morrow is standing by live from King of Prussia PA where is that Jeff and what's happening Dave, that is, uh, as you well know, being a Philadelphia native yourself, is northwest of uh, the city of Brotherly Love, out here in the northwest suburb, so to speak. Uh, a huge King of Prussia Mall, which you're also familiar with, is just over the hill over my uh, uh, left-hand shoulder there. We're also right next to the Pennsylvania Turnpike, where that empties on into the uh, Schuylkill Expressway here at the big toll booth. Just a little bit of light mist, maybe a little sleet mixed in. It's freezing mist. Let's go ahead and uh, pan over and we can look up at the light there and if you uh, look closely you probably see some of the mist uh, falling down here really not a lot of wind there was a lot of wind earlier in the day uh, that really lowered the wind chill and made it kind of brutal out here at times but that wind has pretty much abated at least for the time being we can pan on over and show you the toll booth and show you that there really isn't a whole heck of a lot of traffic but just like mike was saying that folks are pulling on over and trying to clear the slush and the ice off the windshield wipers and uh, get things kind of cleared up. We've been seeing that happening here at the toll booth, both the big rigs and the smaller cars doing the same thing. There's a lot of slush out there, but we have seen a lot of the uh, sand trucks and the salt trucks coming out and doing their best to try to uh, get all that melted. A little bit tough to do when the temperature's stuck here at 20 degrees. Will it stay cold enough to keep it a frozen mess into the morning rush out here in the northwest part of Philly? We'll have to wait and see tomorrow morning, but just like Mike, we'll be back here at 6 o'clock to give you the very latest. Back to you. Jeff, thanks a lot. Get inside, get warm, and get some sleep. Appreciate that. Jeff Morrow from the Philadelphia suburb of King of Prussia. And Colin, he raises a good question. Is it, uh, is it going to get warm enough to see this icy mess turn to just a wash, just wet weather? Most areas of all the major cities from Washington right up through Boston, it will not get warm enough. So there will be many problems as folks take it to the uh, morning commute. So what we're looking at basically is a battle going on with the cold air in place across the northeast and a low pressure area that we expect to get going very soon across the mid-Atlantic states. It heads up toward the northeast basically following the coastline. What we're looking at right now is a big old mess with lots of sleet and snow across the northeast, but by the morning and into the commute time, we'll notice that the rain does make some inroads across coastal zones. But not many inroads. That's right. Cold air is gonna win out in this situation, mm -hmm. and many folks, particularly from the cities and points north and west, the warm air will not make it in, and the icy conditions will linger. Rochester, Syracuse, Albany, Wilkes-Barre, Pittsburgh, we're all going to have problems tonight and tomorrow. Now, I want to get to the radar because it appeared as if the precipitation was almost non-existent where uh, Jeff and Mike were. And as we can see, it is very light. This is where Mike Seidel was, just north of New York City at the Tappan Zee Bridge, and just northwest of Philadelphia, King of Prussia, and there's very little happening there now. But as we can see, as we pan out a little bit further down the coast, there is a lot more moisture gathering in western Virginia's and the Carolinas and that is heading straight north. You make a very good point Dave. The folks in the big cities, it is precipitating but it is mainly light and it is patchy. The strongest and deepest moisture is back across the crest of the Appalachians and by the way there's quite an ice storm going on right now for folks around Pittsburgh and many areas of the northern Appalachians but this area right here, the area where you see 
the radar echo is blossoming, that is what's going to zip up and across most of the megalopolis for the morning commute. Okay, let's get serious now. Boston, morning rush hour. It's been snowing all day and all night. What happens tomorrow? They're beginning. Your gums.